the range things I've ever shown on stream. No, it's awesome. It's one of the most awesome things. You can also get gifted a sub. Here's the one minute ad break now. Let's watch Hello, me and Cat. and welcome to the Hard Man Good Times Broadcast. My name is Butch Dieselsteak, and today we're going to be talking about self-improvement for young men. Have you been feeling kind of down recently? Yeah. Well, that must mean you're not a man. When's the last time you consumed four raw eggs? Have you ever invested in crypto? Or are you not brave enough? When's the last time you flipped a tire over? When's the last time you ate yourself into a week-long meat coma? Okay, what are we gonna do without I, I don't know. Well, what do you think can be done about it? Fund social programs to help young adults find hobbies and socialize with each other and no! support for young men <laughs> suffering <laughs> with mental health issues. <laughs> It's the feminists. It's the cultural Marxists. Now the femoids have got their own little jobs gluing acrylic nails to horses or something. They only want to date the wealthy chad. There are microplastics in your sperm. You're never going to touch a woman. Your skull is the wrong shape and your balls are not tanned like Tucker Carlson's. You will forever be maidenless. Just drink the soy milk, Jeremy. Just grow your soy boobs and accept Except no bitches. No bitches. No bitches. No bitches. Is the hard time to collapse and set the hardcore levels to the ground. Man, how are we gonna do with those men? Chronically bitchless. Woman here. gals and nbs i've got some news someone found the rotten corpse of gamergate ripped it out of its shallow grave and is letting the maggots slowly crawl out of it for hours upon hours propped up in front of a sure sm7b mic straight men are having a crisis if you'd like to have a laugh and an aneurysm at the same time i suggest you check out the incel wiki to read up on some theory there you can enjoy reading up on peer-reviewed concepts such as female sneakiness they've even provided us with a picture of eve with bare boobs eating the apple even if told not to. And you can click on the word boobs there if you're not sure what those are. They even provide helpful citations such as the music video for No Scrubs by TLC to demonstrate hypergamy. Even though their ideology is much the same as in- Okay, I'm gonna be honest, like, they're making some points. Okay. incels, the front-facing influencers of the Manosphere, won't call themselves incels because the incels are their customers. These alpha males, in fact, used to be just like you, but now they are the ones who have made it to the sex haver citadel, the top 1% of males who have hacked the female brain and fitness game, and they're there to teach you, young Chadawan, how you can get there too. You don't need to be six foot seven, have a jawline that could cut glass or inject cooking oil into your biceps. You just have to take the red pill. The current zeitgeist of the red pill are Tweedle P and Tweedle Cum of the Fresh and Fit podcast, with Fresh and his little CEO bling chain that looks like it came from an incel subsidiary of Claire's Accessories, and Myron Gaines, a guy who literally named himself Admiring Gaines. Hold in your puke, we've only just started. The Fresh and Fit podcast serves as a marketing vehicle for Rollo Tomasi and his successful book and blog, The Rational Male, which spells out red pill theory with a supposed scientific backing. He's supposed to be a modern dating expert, but he's been mm. married for 25 years to a woman who I assume is extremely adept at compartmentalizing, as I couldn't- Damn, dude, beacon of masculinity right here. Imagine having a husband who's drawn a sexual market value graph, especially one that starts at age 15. Rolo calls himself the godfather of the red. The transvestigations broke my brain. Now, literally, I'm only seeing. I, every time I see someone, I'm like, they're trans. 
it straight up, I think it has like this weird leaking effect where I'm literally looking at this and I'm like, oh, what about their clavicles? Typical. Typical FTM, okay? Straight up. Look at how feminine energy, uh, look at how the feminine energy is just coming out of uh, her eyes. <laughs> no Adam's apple, notice. pill but i think he looks more like the incel crypt keeper the one who's riddles three you must pass to enter the sweaty basement of the manosphere <coughs> unfortunately there's not enough buzzfeed videos going around these days of extremely cringe rad femmes for angry meninists to rack up millions of views by providing their extremely insightful commentary on them. Why are women perceived as the weaker sex? Probably because statistically speaking, See, if you understand what humor is and how it works, men, which I'm guessing you women, don't because you're feminist, women that that are not as funny as men, have men have the generally roots speaking, very dark uh, Chris and physically strong, strong actually broke this down. If you're talking about the whole strength, then yeah, Wait, let's do the... Buzzfeed, you owe feminism reparations. But now certain YouTube channels have learned that you can spike unsuspecting young men who are simply looking for self-improvement advice with a cheeky red pill via the algorithm, such as this one which uploads videos titled things like The Ultimate Guide for Young Men, How to Get Your Life Together or nine strange ways to boost your confidence and soon enough you'll have fallen into titles like toxic masculinity is a myth and why 95% of men are single and lonely and the danger of celibacy. Yeah, why 95% of men are single and lonely? Uh, I don't know, maybe because they're watching your fucking videos, dog. Or also 95% of men are single and lonely? That, that statistic is... How women manipulate you. This channel in particular has become extremely popular even though it's just stock footage with a computer generated voiceover reading a script that sounds like it was written by an AI whose only data input source is the diary of a 15 year old boy who got rejected by the popular girl in class one time and has constructed his entire personality around it. One, if you're unattractive, then don't ever try to flirt or even approach us. Whatever you'll do will automatically be considered creepy to us. Each word you say makes us puke. What? Or people mostly lack self-confidence. Bro, what the fuck is that, dude? That is so psychotic. These, this is just suey fuel, isn't it? That's what this is, right? And also, many poor guys are desperate to get girls. Being rich makes you valuable. Women love it when they get attention from someone who is valuable in society. It's every girl's fantasy. Remember Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes, their favorite media to reference when applying generic armchair psychology to all women is the movie Fifty Shades of Grey, of course, because that book was written by all women. It was actually me who wrote the line, I feel the color in my cheeks rising again. I must be the color of the communist manifesto. Nothing turns me on more than Marx. I'll take the knee for you, Carl. Um, we also all wrote B-Movie. Did you know that all women want is a man with a furry little butt? She wants a little tiny furry man with wings that she can trap under a glass whenever she wants. And also, you're never going to fulfill those Okay, this isn't real. She, this is her joke. Big, She's joking. Be human without a bee sting and each word you say makes her puke. And also, this is every girl's fantasy. Remember B-Movie. But hang on one minute. How will you ever be able to learn what a woman really wants by watching B-Movie if it's not available on US Netflix? Well, my friends, do I have something that could help you with that? That's right, this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surf if you do so much as even try to get me to take out one AirPod while I'm in what is happening? In the middle of a workout, you're getting a kettlebell right up in the scrot. So you want to talk to women at other gyms where there's not going to be that much of a social consequence. You're going to say something along the lines of, hey, I'm new to this gym. I don't come often. 
I just want to uh, meet you real quick. If I'm up with his eyes, why is he like, he's got the crazy eyes, bro. A guy shows no interest and I've seen him work out. Like, you know, you kind of know regulars, but you don't know them. Like, but you see him work out like, oh yeah, I know this guy because he shows up at the same time I show up. Mm -hmm. And then he finally makes conversation. I'm more willing to talk to that guy versus as like someone who's like staring at me and then tries to talk to me. I'd be like, okay, okay. leave me alone. Myron, you had editorial control here. You could have cut that bit out. You know, the bit where she completely destroyed all of the advice you gave. But don't forget to sign up for his free dating and fitness advice ebook. Make sure to get my free ebook. I'm gonna share content with you guys that I otherwise probably wouldn't be able to share on YouTube or Instagram because it's not safe. Well, I've been on Myron's email Ooh. list for a couple of months now, and I am yet to receive these hot tips and tricks that wouldn't be allowed on YouTube. He said- What kind of tips and tricks would not be allowed on YouTube? Like what? Seven ways to hypnotize women? Like how to kidnap women and lock them in your basement? How do you... <laughs> Revenge porn. How you can use it for extortion. Days that they wouldn't be allowed on YouTube, but he links to videos that are hosted on YouTube. Myron hits all of the usual scammy sales funnel tactics. Sob story about getting bullied in school, fake... It's so funny because like... All of the fans of these fucking idiots, unironically, are the same people that call me like a grifter. You know what I mean? Like, they're being hella scammed by these fucking dildos all day, every day. And then they turn around and they're like, bro, you're a socialist, but you live in a nice house, bro. Fucking scammer. Secondhand testimonials from Scott and Giuseppe, a story where Myron himself saved up for ages on a minimum wage job so he could pay $6,000 to his mentor and how much that changed his life. So you are softened up to the idea of paying him $250 for a 10 minute call, $500 for a 30 minute call or $897 for a one hour call. Myron says in his ebook that after unplugging from the matrix and realizing- Those are very strange numbers, by the way. Like, why isn't it just like a round number? I don't understand. Women want for himself. They became attracted to him like bees to honey, bees to honey, bees to honey, bees to honey. He says bees to honey four times in this ebook. I'm starting to think he finds bees sexually attractive now. Also, this analogy doesn't even make any sense. Bees aren't sexually attracted to honey. Bees make honey. Unless you mean hey, pollen. In that your workout regimen caused a swarm of women to consume various plant secretions, which they then regurgitated and using the resulting viscous substance sculpted you into existence and stored you to consume over the next several years as a non-perishable food source. Because if so, that's pretty impressive. So what's this information then that Myron's been hiding from us that's too hot for YouTube? In an email called Fitness Industry Lied to You, Truth Revealed, we get to the truth about losing weight. I bet you're all dying to know. I filmed an entire YouTube video for you on this exact thing. Check it out here, breaking down the truth on fat loss. These truths are often seen as controversial, so this video could be taken down at any time. <gasps> We'd better click on the link now. What are these controversial secrets, Myron? So for weight loss to occur, guys, calories out needs to exceed calories in. <gasps> Holy shit! It's, it's over. That's, uh, are we... I'm gonna have to call my account manager for that one. Fuck. Might get banned off Twitch for this one, boys. I'm sorry. This shit is like, I didn't realize the video was going to have TOS. These are truths that literally cannot be shown. S Susan, Fuck. what are you doing leaving this off? We can't have this on YouTube. So what about Fresh? Well, he's an expert alpha, banging nines and tens all the time too, don't you know? Sometimes three in a day. But today we're going to talk about my W terms of having three women in one day. Now, it sounds crazy, right? I met this guy at a pool party. He's an NBA player. I won't say his name for, for some reasons, but you know, he's a pretty top tier guy, head value guy, right? So he's like, yo, dude, you know what? 
I'm so is my- this the fresh or is this the fit? Because I really don't know. Which one is the fresh and which one is the fit? Because this man does not seem fresh, nor does he seem fit. So which one is he? <laughs> He's the ampersand. <laughs> Oh, neither. At least, like, one of them is kind of fit. Yeah, he's the and. He's the ampersand. Mansion party, like, uh, the next day, come through. I got you. Legit, guys. I could have a threesome with them. Did my thing with one of them. Came back outside. Hopped in the shower real quick. Talked to the other one. Went back in the room later on. So basically, I had three girls in one night. First rule of character. That happened. Caravan club is that everyone gets some. He then uses this 100% very true story to sell his DMs on demand course for Instagram dating. Plus, it's only $1,000 for a one hour Instagram dating consultation call. After which, you could have women react like this to your Instagram too. <laughs> no, 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 be, be honest. I, I don't really care. Be honest. Be, be honest. <laughs> okay. Why? I think I'm almost like, I feel bigger than you. Man. Loki kind of looks like a new fraud in a way. Right. <laughs> I'm a Nigerian scammer. I oh my God. Why did he fucking let, oh my God. This was a bad idea for him, wasn't it? Holy shit. Just getting absolutely fucking Yo, roasted on his own show. Yeah. You look Nigerian. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, I would think you scammed. I'm going to pass because you look like the off-brand Kevin Hart. Okay, now put up my rinse. No, hell no. Yes. We're, no. True alpha males. I have no idea. Wait, I want to see this. I want to see what fucking, what are they? What is the, Myron? Is that his name? Myron Fresh and Fit. IG. Let me take a look at these motherfuckers. I, My, Myron Gaines. Unplug fit. Okay. Shirtless holding up a dog. That's That one's all right. With Ock and Kodak Black. He's always wearing that ugly ass like fresh and fit shirt in most of his... But he doesn't even have that many fucking photos. Wait, what? Why would he post this? Correction. Hater, you're a rat. Correction. I controlled rats to get me the cheese. I left the job to pursue podcasting, but I was good at what I did. And I don't regret a second of this. Shout out to all the law enforcement out there that put their lives on the line to keep keyboard warriors and everyone else safe. Safe from what, dude? Having a fun time? What is this? Safe from what, brother? Oh my God, this guy. I thought it was like... Holy fuck, dude. Um, this might be too soon, but in the picture without the shirt and the dog, you can tell he's trans. Okay, stop. Stop. We can't do that. Come on. Come on, guys. We already do too many, like, LGBT faux jokes and shit. We can't. Like, to the uninitiated, they're going to think we're, like, literally psychotic transphobes, okay? They're not going to know how many trans people are doing these jokes. <laughs> it's funny, but you got to stop. Please. And also, simultaneously, I'm thinking it as well. But I'm trying to... I'm trying not to. Okay, wait, there's a second pick? Damn, bro, look at him. He's so cool. These jokes are too dangerous for social media. I'm sure there's no drugs uh, use going on all these elite exclusive parties these guys attend, right? I'm trans and these jokes are fucking hilarious, lol. I, they are because this is the in group. But I'm saying like for the out group, they're going to be like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Because like there's hella people coming in and out of this uh, stream <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> it is pretty funny though. He got kicked off the force because he was not thumb like enough. Yeah, he was too fit. Bro, what did he do? Did he go confiscate these at a subway? Look at all these fucking footlongers in the back. Okay, okay, let's let's continue with this video.
idea why you'd go to Twitter for dating advice, but there's even Twitter accounts that offer seduction tips. And just so it sounds like they know what they're talking about, like it has a basis. After you masturbate, actual... women can sense it and and keep their distance female psychology or something they sprinkle the red pill bullshit in there to make it sound as if it's scientific like these are guaranteed seduction techniques based on peer-reviewed research that will work on any woman there is always an ad for a course underneath these tweets and if you click on the course link the seduction devil wants to sell you you'll apparently be doing the following in just one week skipping the line at bars and clubs high-fiving the bouncers and befriending the staff friends damn dude that's so sick what such incredible such incredible success stories how fucking sad dude this is what you're shocked staring at thank them you serendipity for the five the subs. nines and tens effortlessly without saying a word to them entering a cafe with their girl receiving a warm welcome and discovering that their regular has already been prepared what? walking into any social setting for the first time and leaving happier smarter and richer having made meaningful connections. Beautiful women dropping every excuse to be around them, shooting DMs even when she's got nothing to say, finding time for them when she's busy for everyone else. And women will bring you sandwiches with chips, braless, not asked for, right after you've got a double kill bot lane on League of Legends. It's a tried and tested grifting technique of gradually convincing men that they can externalize their self-confidence and masculinity issues and solely place the blame on women. A simple enemy is always more enticing than the complex and nuanced issues of late stage capitalism and the social stigmas of male mental I miss the ninja women, reference, yes. Women sadly are an easy target. Once they hate women, they no longer treat the women in their lives as equals. And then when the women are not responsive to their supposedly scientifically proven game techniques or are unwilling to be subservient wives, they will hate them even more, blame feminism and a woke society, and possibly regress into inceldom and or other alt-right pipeline. This keeps them in the grips of the manosphere for as long as possible, paying for courses and watching the content in a paradoxical mental state of both hating women and being obsessed with them, wanting to talk about them for hours on end, day after day. And this is what made it so he difficult did. for me to try and curate all of the main talking points of the Manosphere into a simple set of teachings. The space is full of like 90 minute podcasts during which they just gargle each other's Kool-Aid, regurgitating the same ideas over and over again. And here I am, worried about the runtime of this video, like a beta little cook. Ooh, will anyone watch my video if it's 90 minutes long? It took me three months to make, but I don't know if it- Welcome to the 9,725th episode next three hours gated enough scams at this point to know that if you need to convince people of an idea that initially sounds absurd i'm gonna skip some parts of this because it's very long right and i want to see the i want to see the meat of it um dude it's one hour and 52 minutes long uh i want to see like and are desperate oh here on the rabbit like hole i'm gonna skip onto... like the explaining the red pill theory debunking hyper like i'll I'll skip the red pill theory part, but we'll watch like debunking hypergamy, debunking monkey branching, stuff like that. The wheat waffles face rating charts and are desperately trying to work out how ugly women find them with needlepoint precision. So the skull can be divided into two parts, the splanchocranium, which comprises all of the facial features and the neurocranium. But a few years ago, this Kermit sounding ass PhD haver crawled onto the scene and started regurgitating these ideas, but with bigger words, emboldening the movement even beyond the damp basements Phrenology of Inseldom and into popular right wing rhetoric. This man. You guys is have heard that. You guys have seen the phrenology aspect of Inseldom. He's slimy tentacles obviously. into every video I make now, and each time he does, I realize more and more how dangerous he is. Fresh and Fit came along and took the podcast format, but instead of shouting the talking points in other men's faces, they will invite unprepared women on as guests under the guise of discussing sex and relationships. And then when- 
Wait, isn't that fucking what's his face? Um, isn't that a, one of the dudes who hates me or some shit? Like the ones that were doing like hella fucking videos on me. Uh, talking about how <laughs> because I called them transphobic, which they 100% were and are. Uh, they got real mad and they were like, Hassan, you're racist and also uh, fucking call everybody transphobic. I thought those guys hated Peach and Abby, Abba and Preach. Yeah, I thought those guys hated uh, Fresh and Fit. When they get there, they take their phones off them, not the male guests, make them sign a waiver, and then feed them. I actually agree with you and thought you did good against Tate. Oh, nice. Thank you. Them shots until they can no longer form a coherent sentence. I, on the other hand, need to drink to perform a coherent sentence. <laughs> when you come home, I'm gonna be in lingerie. I'm gonna keep it nice and fresh and waxed for you. I'm gonna cook your food. Oh, you just shit. He yelled at you for saying you wouldn't watch a video, then didn't watch your video? Yeah. Stay home the bacon. That's oh, it. Shit. But as soon as a woman disagrees with Myron, he will kick her off for interrupting him. She's big and beautiful, except for how she is. Essentially, my big girl. can you please stop interjecting? Sorry. Do not ever fucking snap your fingers at me again. You're going to respect me on my platform, and period. And you're going to respect me backwards. No, 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 no. You're going to keep being disrespectful. It is. Oh, God damn. That's brutal, brother. God damn. God damn, dude. No wonder this motherfucker is so insecure, bro. Look at this shit. Holy fuck. You could land a plane on that, dude. Austin would be able to land a 737 NG directly on top of that. Holy fuck. Bro, the way that they, the way that they treat women uh, on their show, from what I have seen uh, in all of the clips that I've seen, like, you know they do the same shit to you and it'd be a waste? What do you mean? So the thing is... Internalized baldophobia? Yeah, I know. Um, I should Maybe I should fly out to Miami so I can give him some finesse to ride. So... This is just insecurity. Like... Sometimes I feel like I'm fucking crazy that like... I, I, I can't comprehend how people don't look at what he's doing to all the women that are on his podcast and shit or the way he talks about women and can't recognize that like he's just a deeply insecure man it is very weird like how do you not recognize that it's so obvious like what they're doing all right get the fuck out no problem real talk get out all right go ahead oh, take your headphones get out let's take several seats serious. guys it's okay i'm dead ass like get the fuck out of here bro like i'm not gonna tolerate no chick i'm not here thinking like oh i'm special but i don't it's like you can walk out now he's not in his feelings though like a woman no yeah that's the funny part about this this is why i'm sorry but this is how it works this is why the person who like takes these motherfuckers down can't be someone even like Ethan Klein, really. Okay. It can't be someone like XQC. It can't be someone like Ethan because their audiences don't respond to that. And it certainly cannot be a woman because they literally just like, even though half of their audience looks like XQC or looks like Ethan or looks like, you know, every other person that they're going up against, they see themselves as like, they, they, they look at shapes and sizes and colors. That's all they look at. It has to be someone who like, who, who just looks uh, like, a, like a Chad. You know what I mean? And not only that, but it certainly cannot be a woman, no matter how they look like, because all of the, because like automatically, the audience does not respond to women as like human beings, straight up. It's not an emotional female reaction. No, it's a fact reaction. Because, like, no. she's so right. She's nailing it here. Like, when these guys get incredibly hysterical, that's seen as, like, macho masculine behavior. He's holding his ground. It's like, bro, no. Like, that's... Any woman behaves like that, you're going to be like, that's a bitch. She's being, like, a bitch. She's being hysterical. Typical hysterical woman. But no, when, when fucking... Which one is this again? Fresh? Whatever. Fit? When Fit is doing it, what was his name? Byron? When, whatever. The one, this one, is doing it. Uh, then they're like, oh, that's like, he's an alpha. The Fed. Yeah, Fed and Fit. Fed and Fit podcast. 
Are you just the bald one? No, 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 no. It's rude to cut people off. Yeah, goodbye. Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> goodbye. Oh, Thank okay, you. Okay, bye. You gotta respect the platform and not cut people off. Yeah, that's an it's... emotional reaction. No, listen, it's a fact reaction. But this isn't surprising. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not emotional. It's facts. Really, when he literally thinks women should be silent. Okay, I'm gonna offend some people, so I can't wait for him to queue up the how dare you sign. Oh no, my man. Oh no. Bro, this dude's hairline is, is this dude's hairline is moving further than LeBron James's, dude. Holy shit. Women are to be seen, not heard, bro. How dare you? You know what I'm saying? I'm, especially if I bring you to a function, shut up and don't speak unless people speak to you. Are you triggered, Myron? Each episode goes a little bit like this. There's more and more single mothers with mental disorders and all of their kids are criminals and it's all feminism's fault, guys. I'm sorry, it's not because of the wage Why gap. Why did you guys feed me so many shots because the I wage gap him. is a myth it's all down to women's choice to earn less and grape culture is also a myth okay we have the studies and the stats to prove it it's all there it's just facts, a fact facts. i'm sorry i'm sorry if you can't deal with it because you're in your feelings because you're a female but that's just the way it is <laughs> it is what it is i totally agree see she gets it we love it when a female tells the truth on the fresh and fit podcast <laughs> I don't think what he's saying is right. I mean, why not? It's the facts. It is what it is. Are you just in your feelings? <laughs> She's in her feelings. No, it's it's because. Don't interrupt me. And another thing, did you know girls only have two holes? Yeah. Huh. The third one is just a myth. Facts, the females facts. say that there's a third one down there just for attention. <laughs> we have the studies to back it up, linked in the description. All right. Okay, come on. Is the only one here telling the truth. train them and to teach them to to temper that and control yeah we can but you can't wait what that. It's sorry they use to back up his theories in the rational male i said this in book four you can remove guys it's one minute and 52 uh, seconds long move the, the, I'm skipping. the you can remove the human from the tribe but you can't remove the tribe from the human you can remove the the uh, the what is it you can tr you can still well, like, what was the other question? Friend of the show, Mooncat, did an incredible fucking video. Okay, I highly recommend you check it out on your own. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I told you, I'm gonna skip through some of the parts. Scott, it was, uh, you can, can, can women uh, not be solipsistic? Can we train them and to teach them to, to temper that and control? Yeah, we can. Bro, how is this? Wait, does this guy actually have a wife? Because I've never seen someone permeate so much divorce dad energy. My man looks straight up like a victim of divorce court, okay? I'm just going to say it. I don't believe that he has a wife. I've, like, I've never seen a figure embody every characteristic down to the fucking, like, weird distressed bandana, all the way to the Nike golf glasses that he has, all the way to the fucking long hair and the guitars in his soundproof uh, audio room. No fucking shot, dude. What? No. No, he did not write what did this what? No. That's a joke, right? Stop. Stop. Listen, Jack, my wife left me. <laughs> this guy's name is uh uh Rollo Tomasi? No, dude, dude, wait, wait, wait. Rollo Tomasi, wife. Wifebio.com. According to wifebio.com, is Rollo Tomasi married to wife or dating a girlfriend, kids? He's 53 years old. He's American. He's the author of The Rational Mail. He's been publishing blogs. He's been married since 1996. Rollo Tomasi and his wife got married. He's been married for 25 years, even though he has negative perspectives about marriage. He and his wife's married. Life looks bright. 
I don't believe that. He's on the Red Pill subreddit. Please break up with me. My girlfriend and I are both working with people in solid jobs. What? Now, a bit later, he gives a thread and a status update. What? what is he doing? He's just like writing blog posts about Reddit posts? What the fuck? But you can't remove that. It's still there. It's still an hey. influence. Much of the red pill is based on pop evolutionary psychology, which is a widely criticized field of psychology in general. It is impossible to conduct studies on Evo psych without forcing a set of humans to grow up in a life devoid of any societal stimuli. Although you could probably argue that incels are the closest we've ever got to that. But they will base their theories on experiments from the modern day on people who have already been shaped by modern societal stimuli. So There's even an anti-manosphere, manosphere that rose fresh and fit but still talks on the same points. Yeah, isn't like ABBA and Preach basically that? I thought that's what they were. They were like manosphere adjacent. So all the Manosphere can do to back up its claims is use its shaky pop evo psych and statistics and survey data from the modern world. And they have attempted to do this with flaws. Many flaws. No, I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy with no one-to-one -one ratio on his splanchal So green. we're not gonna, we're not gonna oh, talk about the red pill theory because we already know what it is. No. Today and she's going to get more into like the each individual aspects of this, so I'm skipping that part. We're going to talk about hypergamy. Female hypergamy is the idea that incels believe in, that like uh, all women want to do is level up. That's one of the driving forces of the, uh, the insecurity that a lot of these fucking incels have, okay? Where uh, they just genuinely believe that uh, women are constantly looking for like a higher level male than their current partner. And um, that's it. That's that's like something that women are always interested in, even if they're in a relationship, even if they're happy in a relationship. They're always looking to level up. Talking about hypergamy. Five forms of female hypergamy. You know the word hypergamy or hypergamy. However you want to On this podcast, we don't cry about hypergamy. So hypergamy. This is a huge subject. Human females engage in hypergamy. Women mate across and up dominance hierarchies. I love that. Jordan Peterson is such a fucking red pilled piece of shit cuck lord and it's like people didn't see it for the longest fucking time I'm, you know part of me is like part of me is like i told you so it took you motherfuckers like six years to get to where i was six years ago but still the other part of me is just happy that like finally you're here you know what i mean you've arrived i don't i don't feel so fucking lonely anymore god damn it small percentage of men hogging a large percentage of women, women can't get rid of their hypergamous nature and then just leave the men at the bottom to be cast away that's fucking terrifying it's widely accepted that women are, are hypergamous that's it first of all let's look at the supposed evidence that they have for hypergamy this is a study which revealed that 5,000 years ago after the rise of agriculture a huge uptick in wealth disparity meant that there were a small group of very rich alpha males that reproduced with on average 17 women cooking the rest of men into a sexless oblivion to deal with this we developed the monogamous system which ensured no man was left out of the reproductive sexual marketplace. This was an example of women's ingrained hypergamous nature at its peak. And if we allow the current sexual marketplace to expand to its natural conclusion, it will all happen once again. You know, they were, they were the incels of, of thousands of years ago. Yeah. They were the original, right? So they, they might group up to rebel against the Chad, and they will take the women and separate them among themselves. The, the Marxists, for example, they came to America and they destroyed thousands of years of cultural evolution. We live in a primitive sexual market, yeah. just like it existed thousands of years ago. For a start, there is no consideration that this may have not been the women's choice. Many of these powerful alphas- Yeah, that was the guy in the Jubilee video that I did a video on. He's like an incel. So we're probably are wording the women in all reality and not allowing her any choice in her mating preference whatsoever. One of the things your research has indicated is that there, there is a manner in which women are attracted to people who manifest dark triad traits. Yeah. <laughs> yes! Yes! Dude!
This is fucking crystal mommy shit. God, it's so fucking tight being a man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all the ladies and the MBs in the chat. When you're a man, you could just get away with the dumbest shit, okay? You could say literally the absolute stupidest shit, and the overwhelming majority will look at you and go, no, that's actually pretty good and so smart. Actually, thank you. I love that, dude. I love that. Say, I would it's add awesome. Qualifier that it tends to be younger women, teenagers, or women in their early twenties. There is no modern day evidence that women prefer bad boys, either when they're ovulating or when they're not. There's actually more evidence to prove the opposite. There is evidence that women are attracted to men with dark triad traits, but one of these traits is narcissism, which correlates with physical attractiveness and extroversion. And in much the same way, men are attracted to women with dark triad traits as narcissism correlates with physical attractiveness. So once the physical attractiveness and the confidence is controlled for, dark triad traits actually add nothing for either gender. Basically, you can be confident and nice and you'll still be attractive to women and men. But this doesn't stop JP stomping around podcasts, talking about this like it's science-based fact. The only other evidence they have for this is the pop evo psych evidence, which has not been proven to the point of peer-reviewed consensus. Peterson will maintain that cross-culturally, women have always dated across an Oh. Females engage in hypergamy, and hypergamy is the, t and this is also true cross-culturally, and it's also quite, uh, it's just as extensive in Scandinavia. Not quite, there's a bit of attenuation, but not much. Women mate across and up dominance hierarchies. Men mate across and down. Okay, well, and that has to be the case, because <laughs> obviously it has to work that way. If one goes up, the other has to go down. This is only half true. Up Peterson yours! consistently fails to point out the hordes of studies that show that hypergamy is much less prominent in more developed countries, because as an economy develops and is able to provide social safety nets and less children die at a young age, they will have less children at an older age, as it is safer to do so, and they will choose a spouse later in life based on other needs such as emotional needs you're probably not familiar with this concept jordan but people are finding other people that actually like them so i don't know this kind of sounds like a much better solution for all genders rather than trapping people into marriages they entered for the needs of bearing children and economic stability but that's apparently the red pill utopia that we're all striving for. No, that's literally the opposite. In cell minions also because that way, because that way, uh, fucking a lot of men are going to get left behind. They're not going to be able to fuck. So don't account for the fact that men on average, thanks to millennia of patriarchy, earn more than women still. So it's not surprising that we're still living with the norms of a husband earning more than a wife. Divorce rates are actually lower than ever because marriage rates are lower than ever because people are actually waiting to find someone they actually fucking like later in life after their frontal lobes are fully formed. And this is actually decreasing the chances of younger, less wealthy men being left with nobody and of old female spinsters being left with nobody. But hang on a minute, say the incels, there is evidence that women are initiating divorces when they get promoted. I wonder why. This means they're looking for highest- I wonder why. I, I, it's like, it's almost like uh, all of this entire conversation hinges on giving women more autonomy, unironically being devastating for some men who are too insecure, who are too insecure to fucking uh, be in a comfortable relationship with a woman that is a peer. Uh, that is the reason. Jordan Peterson doesn't even hide it for the record. He literally straight up says it. He says that we don't know the consequences of birth control. That is one of the first things that I heard from Jordan Peterson that was like, oh, dude, like this guy is just like a fucking straight up sexist weirdo. Um, why is birth control devastating? Because it offered women sexual liberation and sexual freedom. The, the opportunity to make their own choices, to, their own choices in like when they have a child and whatnot. The opportunity to be able to work in a workforce. So that's it. That's the whole, you know, that's the big secret status men we tell guys all the time that marriage isn't really a good institution in the united states anymore. a woman choosing a bartender who is broke over a rich guy 
is just so far removed from reality. The concept is known as monkey branch. 70% of all marriages end because the woman petitioned to have it end. It's yeah. set up so that the one with less money is the one who gets spousal support. Because they've been incentivized to do so because of the wealth transfer. For women, like the richest women in the world, either got their money through inheritance or they got it through divorce. Right? They just want to protect themselves. That's generally why they do a it. A woman breaks up in order to trade up. I could struggle with you or I could take this money that the government's giving me. And all I got to do is sleep with you. Ultimately, this could also be her searching for a bigger, better option. And they believe they've got relationship equity that they can make a withdrawal on at a later date. Women do initiate more divorces now because when they feel that they can support themselves, they are less likely to trap themselves in an unhappy marriage in which they are. It literally doesn't make sense. If promoted women are more likely to divorce, then they're not doing it for the fucking bag. Okay. As a matter of fact, they're doing it because they have the bag. They are financially secure on their own independently. And they are no longer reliant on any like financial support from a partner. And therefore, they have the fucking capability. They have the capability of like maintaining autonomy. So it doesn't even fucking make sense. It may, it's the opposite of the argument they're expect making. expect to do most of the household chores, causing them stress. There is no evidence that they are leaving them for higher value males. There is also another apparently hard to- To be fair though, like they probably are leaving them for higher value males because if you're listening to the fucking, the, the, the fresh and fit uh, podcast, you are a low value male. Like- I don't believe in the high value, low value spectrum or whatever the fuck they're created for, whatever the fuck they've created for themselves. But like unironically, if you are getting your advice from these fucking dickheads, these like insecure dickheads, then you most likely are a low value person. You most likely are just as insecure, if not even more insecure, because you can't even recognize how insecure these people are. The people that you've platformed, the people that you've put on a pedestal are literally just like an empty sh vessel, an empty shell of a fucking man. Therefore, you probably are even more insecure than they are and probably not great to be around, okay? But you can change that. And I'll tell you how. Swallow pill that women will cheat on their beta male husbands with alphas. Another theory that Peterson backs up with particular fervor. And I'm, and I'm not saying anything for this or against this. This is a purely factual biological claim is they pick a monogamous marriage and they cheat with high status guys. Now, you know, obviously in the confines of the marriage. So what does it work? How does it work when you have a high value, high status, like husband and then you fuck the pool boy then? Like, what is that? Then you're cheating with a low status guy. Is that how that works? Because like, isn't that also unironically a thing that happens in the eyes of these people? Like, so why is that happening? I'm too old for Twitch. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Uh, by the way, what is the fucking biological explanation? There is none. It's just like women be doing this and women be doing that. Meanwhile, women are getting served the top of the hour ad break at the top of every fucking hour. I know that was a great segue opportunity earlier and I totally flubbed it and I apologize. Okay. So I'm just running it now. I'm too old for Twitch just allowed women, 10 women, to no longer see the fucking ads at the top of the hour. But if you also aren't lucky enough to get gifted a sub, then all you need to do is subscribe yourself, which you can do for $5 or you can do for free. Here's the woman ad break now. Twitch Prime is free. That's a terrible thing, but... That's a very uncomfortable subject, though, <laughs> for women in particular. Well, it's an uncomfortable subject for everyone. Right. Is there any evidence to back this up? Absolutely not. From survey data, men admit to cheating on their spouses more than women, but the women are catching up with the men because the most common way for someone to cheat is with someone they know, like a work colleague. So now women have been allowed to leave the Sky house Spy more. Seven, they're they're the five tier one gifted. to cheat as much as men do, but there's no evidence that they've ever cheated more than men. And what is happening right now? Why is my fucking computer slowing down it's or is the youtube video slowing down it's still not the norm down? to cheat either like it's somehow become socially acceptable there's no societal shift away from monogamy we still want to get married or settle in long-term relationships humans pair bond that's what we mostly do we're just doing it 
later when we're settled in life. Furthermore, there is no survey data that shows that the women who do cheat are doing so with high status men. If we're going to talk about this through a pop evo psych lens, surely it's more evolutionary advantageous for a woman not to be hypergamous and to be wary of the risk of getting involved with the wrong man who will not support her child. Since the woman has always been the more selective gender, she's always had a choice between a beta or an alpha, so why would she willingly put herself in the dangers of an aggressive, violent alpha and leave her children without a father? Why not just settle down with the beta from day one who will protect her from all of the prey? Is there a big like lag or something? Or is it just the, is my PC dying? Or is the fucking uh, video dying a little bit? I'm seeing like the video, it's the video, right? It's not my PC. Just think of Kim K leaving Kanye for Pete Davidson. Pete must be the highest value male, yeah. I think YouTube has been pooping a little bit alphas. These red pill men are simply projecting how they see the dating market onto women when women actually see it very differently. Take it from me, if a man walks up to me and asks me for my number or asks- Ha! Ah, here's where you got it wrong, Mune Cat. You said take it from me and you're a woman, so obviously we'll never take it from you because it's in your nature to lie. Fucking got it. If only there was a man who could explain to me what women feel and act like. I'm so sad when you came to the UK, I used my sub on Misgive just so I didn't see the ads and now I'm sad. Yeah, you fucking feel bad about that, bitch. It's me on a date. I'm not thinking, oh, wow, I wonder if he has a nice car. I wonder if it's more expensive than my current boyfriend's. I'm thinking, I hope this interaction ends without this man getting angry, violent, or following me home. By getting involved with the red pill and by learning game, you're literally giving yourself a 101 on how to give women every red flag in the fucking book. But by far the most tangible evidence the Manosphere has for modern day hypergamy is from dating apps. Yeah, that's it. Data from dating apps. And this doesn't account for, you know, the plenty of fish data, the tender data that we have. Men do not get nearly as many options as women. And even if we're talking about top tier guys, they still cannot compete. In a since deleted 2009 official blog post on okay Cupid's showed women rating men as worse looking than medium 80% of the time. Most of the men on Tinder of the profiles they come across, females, they'll swipe right on 60% of them. When it comes to females, they'll only swipe right on 4.5%. But the reality is guys, you look at okay Cupid's data yeah. and they behave a certain way. On certain Tinder, uh, yes. women are, they, they like, you know, swipe right. They like the profiles of only 4%. Men, when they see female profiles, they swipe right or like uh, more than 60%. That's a great example of hypergamy. Time to get debunked again, bitch. You like this? Being thoroughly debunked by a vagina haver with a second class degree in music production? There was one infamous blog post made by OKCupid okay in 2009, which supposedly exposed the hypergamous nature of women. Women it showed do be that lying. women rated 80% of men on the website as below average in attractiveness, whereas men's ratings for women's attractiveness resemble more of an equalized bell curve. They just jumped on this as proof of their Pareto principle. It's generally believed that this is one of the main catalysts oh, yeah. of the modern incel oh, yeah. movement. And the blog post was- 80% of the women are attracted to the top 10% of men. Top 10% of men get 80% of the women. Eventually taken down not long after the incel attack in Toronto where 11 people died. The incels took this to mean that big tech was trying to hide the truth of hypergamy. Ironically, that same blog post actually showed that women are more likely to be open to messaging men they see as less attractive, whereas men are more likely to only message women they rate as more attractive to themselves. So it showed that even though women rate most men as below average. I mean, we already knew that though. Women's standards are low as fuck, okay? And they have to be. They literally have to be. As I've said time and time again, that's why I always say, all you need to do is be a seven and every man can be a seven, folks.
Straight up. Women's standards are literally under the fucking trash, okay? It's, it, it's firmly hidden deep inside the core of the earth. It is super fucking low. And you can be higher than the already incredibly low fucking standards that women have. Like, by a lot. That's why I always say every man can be a seven. Every single one of you. Easily. Bridge, they are much more likely to message them anyway. So here we are again with the incel projection of shallow dating preferences on women. In addition to this, r slash Tinder data generally tends to show that men will swipe right on most women and women will be very picky and the ones that they do swipe right on will very likely result in a match. I need to explain why this is the case. A fact that the red pill seems to gloss over is that women are always going to be more Chad says everyone can be a seven. Dude, dude, dude. I didn't say everyone can be an 11, motherfucker. I said everyone can be a seven. And seven is way beyond the expectations that most women are used to, okay? Don't make no mistake. I'm not saying you're going to fucking turn around and like magically become six foot four and chiseled, okay? Shut the fuck up. Don't fucking... Also, don't compare yourself to me. Well, what's wrong with you? I'm saying... Every fucking dude can be above at, uh, at least a seven, okay? Above average in looks. There are a couple things you need to do, and that's it. Figure out how to groom your facial hair and figure out what kind of haircut works with your fucking head, okay? And that could mean going full bald, all right? Hit the fucking weights, go to the gym, develop a healthier diet, healthier lifestyle choices, shower all the fucking time, and wear better clothing that make you feel confident, and then boom, that's it. It's that easy. More importantly than all of that, obviously, is like, you know, uh, being confident as well, which I've talked about many times over. Confidence is a muscle, and it comes only from within and not from external validation. If you have confidence that you are building off of external validation, it's built on flimsy ground, and it can be shattered very easily, okay? I am standing right now, yes. And once you find your face and body type, you can figure out what styles they suit you. Exactly. It just, it's good advice. You can fucking complain all you want, but it's the truth, okay? than men when it comes to dating due to the increased risk of violence and pregnancy, not because of hypergamy. Let's have a look at some stats that the manosphere completely ignores. Younger women who have used dating sites or apps are especially likely to report having negative interactions with others on these platforms. That's too much. I'm going to keep it real with you. I ain't doing all that, bro. Okay, then fucking, you know, keep seething, I guess. That's it. There's hella people in this community that have fucking started working out. They got, uh, you know, really inspired to do something. Go outside, touch grass, touch weight, touch sun. Okay. And if you're fucking stink pilled, beta maxing, you know, suey fuel consuming fucking weirdo on the internet and you're like refusing the shower max. Okay. Refusing the fucking hygiene max and hobby max. Okay. Well, it's not going to happen for you. A majority of female online daters younger than 50 say harassment, unsolicited, explicit messages are very common on dating platforms. 60% of female users aged 18 to 34 say someone on a dating site or app continued to contact them after they said they were not interested, while a similar share, 57%. Oh, dude, dude, what are you insane? I mean, look at XQC. Even that lifestyle can work. Brother, XQC is also like a traditionally attractive person and also pretty fucking confident regardless of his uh, lack of social awareness, okay? And profoundly successful. You know what I mean? This is before we talk about like how much money he has or whatever, but like, you know, don't compare yourself to me or XQC or anybody like that. That's crazy. We're talking about fucking civilians in the wild. We're not talking about motherfuckers who talk to an entire arena of human beings every day for 12 hours, okay? That's ridiculous. Don't do that. 
report being sent a sexually explicit message or image that they didn't ask for. Roughly half of women think dating on sites or apps are an unsafe way to meet people. More under 20s sexually assaulted after meeting offenders on dating sites. The victims in 83% of the 671 cases were female and 17% were male. Oh, and I'm not done yet. Here's a full report from ABC. Thank you, Solero, for the five of the subs. This is really important shit, by the way. Like, <laughs> women have to be more careful in their consideration on who they are going out to dates with or who they are, like, even opening up to partially because you can get fucking murdered. About Tinder's failure to act on SA reports. Of the 48 people they found who reported SA to the app, only 11 even got a response from Tinder. Almost all of those responses did not detail whether any action was taken. And Match Group, the company that owns basically everything tinder okcupid match.com hinge plenty of fish and some others has openly admitted that they do not screen for sexual predators on their free apps a spokesperson said there are definitely registered sex offenders on our free products which is a bit like a spokesperson for an ice cream company only men murder lol xd no bro but did you not just see the statistics like no, of course, it's not only men that murder. You're fucking ridiculous. But, like, obviously, statistically speaking, men are responsible for, a, like, a, a significantly higher percentage of the sexual assaults uh, and murders that uh, even on the fucking Tinder dating app. Why? What's wrong with you, bro? What the fuck? Men are more likely to murder. Yeah, and I'm not a fucking weirdo. Like, that doesn't mean that, you know, you should prosecute men across the board or, like, assume that all men are murderers, right? Um, unlike you, probably does feel that way about, like, black people because you fucking use the uh, faulty uh, statistic of, like, 1350, which is not even, like, real fucking arrest. They're not even conviction rates, but instead just arrest rates. Um, you know, it doesn't work that way. But it is something that women are, uh, it is something that like women are considerate on considering the fucking, you know, the, the physical differences. Yes. I, by the way, admit that the physical differences are real. Statistics are law. There are no exceptions to rules or outliers. Anomalies don't exist. He's saying there are definitely flesh eating spiders in some tubs of our ice cream. Don't blame me, I just work here. So look at you, ladies. While Tinder makes men pay for the slight hope of more matches, you'll have to pay for the assurance that you won't be assaulted. And even then, it's not guaranteed. I cannot stress this enough. Dating apps do not represent real life. Dating apps represent an extremely shallow, gamified version of dating that artificially creates the Pareto Principle. Since yeah. women are more likely to have had previous negative experiences with men, I'm not discounting that men have them too, but the fact that women have them more often than men is relevant here. So, Also, on a fucking application, you're not able to showcase your personality. Men oftentimes have a harder time, in my opinion, uh, like, and there's, this is anecdotal. Okay. Straight up. This is there. I'm sure there might be empirical evidence on this, but this is a purely subjective concept, but like, you don't know how to take photos. I don't know how to take photos. You don't know how to take photos. None of us fucking know how to look good in photos and shit. Like as a consequence of the patriarchal constructs that, uh, basically objectified women for so many fucking years and continues to do so to this day. Women are better at fucking presenting themselves in a physical environment like that. They know, you know, they know how to take photos. They know how to like make themselves look better. You just don't know how to do it. Okay. And therefore it's a little bit harder for you to showcase your wonderful blossoming persona. Okay. And it, and it, the application is operating on the fucking binary of like the hot or not. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for you to, you know, uh, have a success rate on an application. That doesn't mean anything, though. Meeting people in person is probably where you are going to have the most success. 
women are more likely to have their guards up when swiping and chatting. So this causes men- Oh God, hypergamy? Ay, ay, ay. Dude, hypergamy is such a fucking idiotic take, okay? It's such an idiotic take. This idea that like, women are always looking to level up. Women are always looking to level up. Women are always looking to level up. It's like, first of all, women are always trying to date above their, their uh, you know, actual dating pool or whatever is such a silly fucking take. Because again, that is super subjective. And secondly, it's not like you don't want to fucking uh, date an attractive person that you find to be attractive. Everybody wants that. It's a normal human quality. It's not exclusive to women. Men to get less matches on the ladies that they're swiping right on. And the men are getting annoyed that they're getting less matches because this leads to less of a chance that they'll find someone that they like. To them, this just becomes a numbers game. So they start swiping right on more and more and more women. And the women start to realize that whoever they swipe right on, they're quite likely to get a match with them. And because they don't want too many unsolicited pictures of male genitalia taken with a pissy toilet bowl in the background to deal with, they start being more picky, confident that this won't matter because they'll still get a lot of matches anyway. As the women get more picky, the men get less and less picky. It's a negative feedback loop. It's not real life. Another stat that Red Pill seems to ignore, 80% of users on Tinder are male and 20% are as someone who suffers with autism, your advice about social skills being a muscle has really helped me be more open to talking to people, women especially, and I'm now a lot more confident. I have a good chunk of friends. Thanks for your advice. I will always be in your debt, and thanks for your advice. Thank you, Hasanabi. Awesome. You're welcome. I also suffered from social anxiety, okay? When I was younger, I was fat. I was scared. I didn't want to fucking talk to people. I would shut down, okay? It takes a lot of time, and it's the same as, like, going to the fucking gym every day and building healthy habits. It's just how it works. Anyway, the Tinder men to women ratio, 78% of users are men, 21.9% of users are women. Holy are shit. female. The bad experiences are causing women to leave the apps altogether. This means that there are women out there, guess what, in real life, who are single and want to meet somebody, not on a dating app. From the incel perspective, women are hypergamous, calculating, and uncaring as they leverage emerging technology in the pursuit of the ideal masculine partner while maximizing the resources they yield from orbiters. Women are also simultaneously sexual commodities, which can be quantitatively evaluated, subject to market distortions, or be unfairly distributed. Here, incels doubly deny women their humanity as women are manipulative when acting and overpriced when objectified. While incels' observations are accurate, their explanations for these observations are grounded in a reductive and dehumanizing descriptions of both men and women. All of a sudden, communism doesn't sound so bad to these guys when it means the yeah. equal distribution of getting your dick wet. Another graph that they love to point to is this one, which shows that almost a third of men are now reporting no sex in the last year. But zooming out and looking at the rest of this data that this graph comes from, it shows that the amount of men sleeping with over three women in the last year is still more than the amount of women doing the same. On the whole, men are still being more promiscuous than women, which doesn't track with their 80% of women sleeping with all of the chads theory. The data would suggest because women aren't like fucking women aren't going on a date and then immediately fucking like all the time in the way that these incels think is happening that's the other thing like they're a little bit more they're a little bit more selective but you know good luck explaining that to all the incels to me that women still want relationships with men but men are increasingly attempting to leverage the dating apps for hookups but are ending up more lonely than they were before in short guys gals and nbs try opening yourself up to experiences which will help you meet people in real life make friends with people of all genders more talk to people even if you don't find them attractive because who knows they could even introduce you to other people you may end up 
being intimate partners with, or maybe you've just found a new friend. It's about self-improvement, exercising your social muscle, and fighting that inner goblin that just wants to stay inside playing Dark Souls. Is that what you kids are playing nowadays? <laughs> Go outside and touch me. The men entering the dating market now have never experienced it without dating apps being involved, and this is a problem. The prevalence of our culture in society makes this dating app's negative feedback loop even more pronounced, as women have their guards up constantly on the lookout for red flags, scaring them off the apps altogether. Here's one post on the r slash Tinder data subreddit that I found, where a young 22-year-old man posted about his experience in the dating marketplace. 22,339 right swipes resulted in no dates for him whatsoever. And this is similar to many graphs posted there for young men. He says that his dating app experience made me waste a lot of time and money, completely ruined the little self-esteem and confidence I had left about myself and my own body, made me lose any real hopes in ever getting a relationship, family, normal life in the future, greatly worsened both my anxiety and depression to new levels never experienced before made me go back to having suicidal thoughts after years of therapy Jesus and as Christ. a result of my deepened depression it also gave me a cannabis addiction and made me gain 50 kilograms of body weight due to a lack of sleep and lack of energy etc all of this makes this man a perfect target for tinder who will goad him into signing up for tinder gold in the hopes of getting more matches and for the red pill community the date literally blaming it anything other on anything other than himself okay but that that's a real like external factor that could bum you out man come on holy shit human beings aren't fucking analytical robots they're not going to look at a situation like that and then respond like and be like well maybe i should fix myself immediately maybe perhaps i'm the reason why i feel the way that i do or whatever the fuck like no um uh, sometimes it doesn't work that way okay uh yeah i mean the solution still is the solution still does revolve around getting the fuck off the dating app um and also uh, you know, uh, the building self-esteem so slowly but surely. Um, but made you a meme. Y'all are so weird, dude. Sometimes. Dating apps and the red pill community are not making money out of finding you happiness and a relationship. The more sad and lonely you are- Is it a cannabis addiction? Yeah, I mean, that, that part is ridiculous. Uh, so, so what? Don't get too caught up in that, okay? It doesn't matter. The more they've got you trapped. So why is our culture completely ignored by the red pill? Well, they don't think it exists at all. And this isn't a belief confined to the red pill itself. It's actually held by right-wing pundits everywhere. And on college campuses, they like to say, oh yeah, one in four women gets raped on college campuses. No, it's actually more like one in 2000. This genera generation Z is having- Where do you get that number from? Uh, I just, source, <laughs> I just made it up, bitch. Least amount of sex <laughs> of any <laughs> other generation, but yeah. yet we live in a quote unquote hookup culture, Because right? we're using the female or else. One in three, one in- Wait, people aren't even saying we're living in a hookup culture. It's always the right wingers that say we're in a hookup culture. And that's part of the reason why it's like, people aren't like getting into relationships and stuff. Like that- I feel like they themselves ended up like they themselves literally fucking ended up writing these like new boundaries and then they believed in it and now they're just like yeah it's it's happening but it's not even happening actually and for one in five women are going to get sexually assaulted on campus which is just nonsense which we both agreed is the idea that rape is perpetuated encouraged or tolerated in a society you would need to present some kind of data because it's this idea of rape culture it's the rape fantasy of i don't know third wave feminism i don't know what it is i don't believe rape culture exists because people know that rape is bad some surveys were run to find the oh, i have the same discord partner hoodie oh god i'm never wearing that again of essay on college campuses in the US not long before obama and biden were elected one in five of every one of People all understand and recognize that rape is bad. The problem with rape culture is a lot of things that would otherwise be considered rape, these fucking weirdos don't consider rape. That's the problem. And rape culture is the normalization of sexual harassment. 
and the nor and and the refusal to ask for consent. That's the issue. One of those young women who's dropped off for that first day of school, before they finish school, will be assaulted. The right claim that this was not true, and they still believe that to this day, claiming that the real number is somewhere around 1 in 52 women. According to the Department of Justice, or Bureau of Justice, it's about 1 in 52 of all sex. That includes, you know... By the way, that's still an alarming number, man. What? Like, what the fuck? It's not 1 in 4. It's 1 in... It's not 1 in 5. It's 1 in 52. Okay. Oh, shit. I didn't realize, man. Okay, never mind. Um, I guess that's okay. playing grab ass. Much more comprehensive data from the U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics estimates that about one in 52.6 college women. There's a vast difference between 0.6% and 25%. To play devil's advocate for a second, the survey that found the original one in five number that the Obama campaign used were conducted across only two college campuses in the U.S. So they didn't really give a comprehensive view of college R culture as a whole across America. There is also no evidence to suggest that R culture is worse on college campuses than it is in general for people of any age, whether they're enrolled at a college or not. However, in 2015, the CDC conducted their own survey called the NISVS, which did not only ask students, but everybody whether they had been a victim of this type of crime. Its findings backed up the student survey, saying that one in five women had actually been R'd. This contrasts with the numbers obtained by the Bureau of Justice and Statistics, and these are the numbers that the right-wing pundits use. So this number is based on the NCVS Crime and Victimization Survey, which states that around 1 in 52 people of all ages has been a victim of R or SA. For that reason, there's no way for me to compare the stats for college-age women from the BJS numbers versus the CDC numbers for the college-age women because there's no CDC survey that focused on just college women. So for that reason, I'm scrapping the college age part. We're just looking at everyone to keep this simple. So I'm going to compare the CDC's findings that one in five women have been R'd and the BJS's findings that one in 52 women have been R'd or SA'd. <sighs> One talking point that they like to give us is that the CDC's definition for the crime is like far too wide and the BJS's definition for the crime is very precise. And they were and the questions were extremely vague, not direct like the definition that we gave you guys before as far as grape goes according to the FBI. So first of all, let's compare the definitions of the crimes. So there's always going to be gray areas here as to what people define as crossing the line. But Overall, these definitions between the surveys are more or less pretty similar, wouldn't you say? So how did the CDC find that 50% of women had been a victim of SA and one in five had been a victim of R, whereas the BGS found that one in 52 people had been a victim of either R or SA. It's down to how you conduct your survey. The stigma surrounding R culture prevents people from knowing they're a victim of R or SA and even willing to admit to themselves or others that they're a victim of R or SA, especially if it was perpetrated by a close friend or intimate partner, which is most cases. The CDC used trained staff to carry out the NISVS. This survey only asks respondents about R and SA, no other victimizations. They also did not use the words R or SA in their questions, but described events to the respondents whilst reminding them that the event, if it happened, is not their fault. They didn't even make the respondent say yes because that can trigger trauma. So instead they asked how many people have ever made you and listed certain acts so that the person could just say a number. The Bureau of Justice and Statistics used the NCVS to find the one in 52 number. So this is a generic crime victimization survey. The staff were not trained on how to speak to people about R and SA. Respondents of this crime survey had a screening question jumped on them about R and SA in the middle of other questions which asked whether they'd had their car broken into or their house broken into or been mugged. 
These screening questions also used the words are and essay, and if the respondent said no, then no further questions were asked. Furthermore, an entire report was written by a board of experts to explain a ton of other factors in the NCVS, which also lead to the underreporting of R and SA. These surveys also probably both still underreported because they only contacted household numbers, whilst not including places such as military bases, healthcare facilities, or domestic violence shelters. And it's also very unlikely that someone currently living with an abusive partner would sit there on the phone taking a survey about their abuse. But you want to know why they're you want to know why women continue to falsely accuse men of rape because they're not being prosecuted. In order to keep all men and employers fearful of false accusations of rape, domestic violence. We cannot believe the victims as soon as they come out because sadly that's what these Okay, this is this is my favorite type of uh discussion on the on this otherwise uh incredibly serious subject matter over the fucking SpongeBob game. That's awesome. These women do, they falsely accuse people of rape. And then when you call them out, they get mad at you. And a few days later, they say, yeah, it was for clout. You know, you can't completely dismiss. I will never get over how much Matt Walsh personifies, embodies like a liberal soy boy in the way that he looks. He straight up looks like he brews IPA, craft beers on his fucking spare time. And yet, like... I don't know why people just like don't point that out regularly. He just straight up looks like it's awesome. 100% that guy from the boys. Yeah. This very real fear that men have that some evil woman could come along and just ruin their life with a In story. In this whole era of the Me Too movement, evil woman. I think that we've done a huge disservice to everybody. Assuming that anytime anybody's accused of anything, that it must be true. There is currently no evidence that any women anywhere are getting any sort of benefits from accusing men of R or SA, whether it was false or not. What they're more often getting is harassment and setbacks in their careers, especially when it's a powerful man being accused. But how many of these accusations are false? Well, Rollo and other Manosphere influencers like to insinuate that these sneaky people Bro, why is everybody fucking, I don't care about the new Black Panther, man. I don't care about watching that right now. Emails are doing it all the time. So the thing is this, is that the definition basically says that any allegation of rape can only be classified as a false allegation if it has been determined after a thorough investigation that a crime did not occur. It's, it's, it's basically trying to prove the negative. So just because those fraudulent ones were the ones that they could record according to the definition of what it is does not mean that 98 to 98% are, are true, but that is exactly what a prosecuting attorney will try to convince a jury. It is true that we'll never accurately know, but there is an estimate of between two and 10%. And if it could be as many as one in 10, that could be a problem. Okay, so let's learn about false R allegations. To best determine whether an R allegation is false, police look at the nature of the allegation. Based on previous investigations where R's have been proven to be false or the accuser has retracted the allegation. Looking at these cases, the most common occurrence is a minor who has skipped school or missed a curfew and to avoid punishment, they say that they've been assaulted. In the vast majority of these cases, the parent will file the report on behalf of the child. And when the child comes into the police station, it becomes clear that this was not a real event as they will not name or describe the perpetrator or the event. Other common motivations include people attempting to cover up unfaithfulness to their partner, anger or revenge, attention or sympathy. In these cases, when the allegation has served its purpose, it is normally retracted or dropped. Another large portion of them come from mentally ill people. These people will also very likely describe a violent attack, the type of R that we know is not 
actually that common. And our allegation is unlikely to be false if the victim describes a situation that involves someone that they know, an intimate partner or a friend as the perpetrator, and the issue of consent could be construed as a grey area. But of course, we don't know. Some of the allegations counted as true could be false, but just as much some of the allegations counted as false could be true. But this doesn't mean that police are throwing men in jail based on the assumption that an allegation is true based on the nature of it. You still have to prove it beyond reasonable doubt, which for R is incredibly difficult. Out of 216 complaints that were classified as false, only 126 had even gotten to the stage where the accuser lodged a formal complaint. Only 39 complainants named a suspect, only six cases led to an arrest, and only two led to charges being brought before they were ultimately deemed false. Here, as elsewhere, it has to be assumed that some unknown percentage of the cases classified as false actually involved real R's. What they don't involve is countless innocent men's lives being ruined. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, since records began in 1989, in the US there are only 52 cases where men convicted of S, A or R were exonerated because it turned out that they were falsely accused. I'm going to go ahead and assume that a gigantic percentage of that is also uh, black men as well, at least historically. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but historically that has been the case. By way of comparison, in the same period, there are 790 cases in which people were exonerated for murder. In the average case of a false R complaint, the charges will be dropped and the man accused, if there even is one, will never even know about it. You are far more likely to be a victim of R or SA as a man than be falsely accused of it. You're also far less likely to report it or tell anyone about it. This includes domestic violence as well. If the Manosphere really cared about the well-being of men, that's what they'd be talking about. But it's not masculine to be a victim of DV, R or SA. You know, my mom... Um, the single mothers raise criminals. We're going to, we're going to stop this video here because, uh, I, this is really long. I'm going to watch the rest of this tomorrow. Um, there was so much to fucking go over, but like we got stuck. Basically, uh, if you want to finish it on your own, you can, if you want, this is a Mooncats video. I debunked the entire Manosphere. Um,